This is Mac OS Ken. Sweeping child safety changes from Apple, a few COVID related stories, and changes coming for Apple Pay Cash. It is Friday, the 6th of August, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken, brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. Learn more and check your rate at upstart.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Apple came out with some sort of stunning news on Thursday. A new page was launched on the company's site under the heading Expanded Protections for Children, saying that it wants to help protect children from predators who use communication tools to recruit and exploit them and limit the spread of child sexual abuse material, or CSAM. The company lists three changes coming to its all-encompassing ecosystem. First, the company says new communication tools will enable parents to play a more informed role in helping their children navigate communication online. Next, iOS and iPadOS will use new applications of cryptography to help limit the spread of CSAM online while designing for user privacy. And finally, updates to Siri and Search provide parents and children expanded information and help if they encounter unsafe situations. The middle one seems to be the most problematic, assuming any of them are problematic. Let's say we tackle three, then one, then head toward the middle. Siri and Search won't just search. They'll apparently offer guidance as well. It's not an odd thing for a virtual assistant to do if you think about it. Apple says both Search and Siri will provide additional resources to help children and parents stay safe online and get help with unsafe situations. For example, users who ask Siri how they can report CSAM or child exploitation will be pointed to resources for where and how to file a report. Also using Siri and Search to look for CSAM and related content, that will be met with intervention. Apple says such interventions will explain to users that interest in this topic is harmful and problematic and provide resources from partners to get help with this issue. For the new communication tools. Okay, one and two might be a tie for creepy, come to think about it. Apple says the Messages app will add new tools to warn children and their parents when receiving or sending sexually explicit photos. Quoting the company, When receiving this type of content, the photo will be blurred and the child will be warned, presented with helpful resources, and reassured it is okay if they do not want to view this photo. As an additional precaution, the child can also be told that, to make sure they're safe, their parents will get a message if they do view it. Similar protections are available if a child attempts to send sexually explicit photos, The child will be warned before the photo is sent, and the parents can receive a message if the child chooses to send it. How, you may wonder, does Messages know what's being sent or received? Apple says Messages uses on-device machine learning to analyze image attachments and determine if a photo is sexually explicit. The feature is designed so that Apple does not get access to the Messages. A few caveats on this one. First, Apple says it'll only apply to accounts set up as families on iCloud for iOS 15, iPadOS 15, and macOS Monterey. Additionally, Mac Rumors ran a piece with a few clarifications. According to that, the messages changes are an opt-in offering. They are not automatic. Also, it's only for kids 13 and under, at least the part where it tells their folks. According to Mac Rumors, parents cannot be notified when a child between the ages of 13 and 17 views a blurred photo, though children that are between these ages will still see the warning about sensitive content if communication safety is turned on. So the most contentious change announced by Apple seems to be the CSAM detection. 
Again, CSAM stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material and refers to content that depicts sexually explicit activities involving a child, according to Apple. To help address this, says the company, new technology in iOS and iPadOS will allow Apple to detect known CSAM images stored in iCloud photos. This will enable Apple to report these instances to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. That center acts as a comprehensive reporting center for CSAM and works in collaboration with law enforcement agencies across the U.S. Does that mean that Apple is looking at the pictures you store in iCloud? Apple says no. Instead of scanning images in the cloud, Apple says, the system performs on-device matching using a database of known CSAM image hashes provided by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and other child safety organizations. Apple further transforms this database into an unreadable set of hashes that is securely stored on users' devices. Basically, before an image goes from a device to iCloud, it's converted on device to a string of letters and numbers, or a hash. That hash is compared to known CSAM hashes. If there's no match, Apple says the device creates a cryptographic safety voucher that encodes the match result, along with additional encrypted data about the image, This voucher is uploaded to iCloud Photos along with the image. Now, if it looks like there is a match, Apple manually double-checks it. If a match is confirmed, Apple says it disables the user's account and sends a report to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. If the account owner thinks there's been a mistake, they can file an appeal to have their account reinstated, according to the company. Apple says... This innovative new technology allows Apple to provide valuable and actionable information to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and law enforcement regarding the proliferation of known CSAM, and it does so while providing significant privacy benefits over existing techniques, since Apple only learns about users' photos if they have a collection of known CSAM in their iCloud Photos account. Even in these cases, Apple only learns about images that match known CSAM. Worth noting, as another piece from Mac Rumors does, this feature is not optional for iCloud users. The option is to not use iCloud. The piece says Apple has confirmed to Mac Rumors that it cannot detect known CSAM images if the iCloud Photos feature is turned off. Now, the only people who could be against stopping child sexual abuse material, those people are sick, those people are sad, they need help at the very least, and maybe some time behind bars. No one worth anything is in favor of allowing such material to proliferate. If you find that statement troubling, seek help. That said... Concerns have been raised about Apple's announcements. Put simply, if these protocols can look for child sexual abuse material, can they not be trained to look for other material as well? That's a concern expressed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The piece from Apple Insider cites a blog post from the EFF. Referring to the scanning in messages, the organization says... All it would take to widen the narrow back door that Apple is building is an expansion of the machine learning parameters to look for additional types of content or a tweak of the configuration flags to scan, not just children's, but anyone's accounts. That's not a slippery slope. That is a fully built system just waiting for external pressure to make the slightest change. A piece from the Financial Times has security types expressing similar concerns, Although the system is currently trained to spot child sex abuse, says that report, it could be adapted to scan for any other targeted imagery and text, for instance, terror beheadings or anti-government signs at protests, say researchers. Apple's precedent could also increase pressure on other tech companies to use similar techniques. Not that they're not up to stuff already. A piece from CNET says other tech companies have been scanning photos for years. Facebook and Twitter both have worked with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and other organizations to root out child sexual abuse imagery on their social networks. 
Microsoft and Google, meanwhile, use similar technology to identify these photos in emails and search results. What's different with Apple, critics say, is that it's scanning images on the device rather than after they've been uploaded to the internet. More news in a moment, but first a word from Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. Paying off debt can feel like an uphill battle. High interest rates plus minimum monthly payments can keep people in an endless cycle of debt. Upstart can help people out. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Upstart looks at more than just your credit score. Factoring in income and employment history, that lets them offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, and you can receive your funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash macOSCan. U-P-S-T-A-R-T, that's upstart.com slash macOSCan. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Mac OS can. This is not an Apple story, but it could be an Apple version pretty soon. Engadget says Amazon is delaying the back to work at work thing for office workers until early next year. Citing a report from Reuters, the piece says after previously announcing it expected corporate employees to return to the office on the 7th of September this year, Amazon has announced a further delay until the 3rd of January 2022. The change of plans comes amid a surge of the highly contagious COVID-19 Delta variant across the U.S. Apple's first store in Mumbai delayed because of pandemic. That's a headline from India Express. 9 to 5 Max Michael Stieber posted a link to that story on Twitter Thursday night, saying there were no details at all in the story beyond the headline. I read the story, and he is right. The news is in the headline. Repeated in the first paragraph, the launch of Apple's first offline store in India, announced for this year from Mumbai, is delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the company confirmed. No word in the piece on when an Apple store will open in India because, did I mention all the news was in the headline? Pretty sure I did. You may start seeing vaccination policies for businesses in Apple Maps soon. iMore says the business review site slash service Yelp will let businesses update their COVID-19 vaccine info including whether proof of vaccination is required and whether the staff at the business is fully vaccinated. While no one has said that that info will find its way into Apple Maps, iMore says with Apple Maps using Yelp for its business information, you have to assume that it too will benefit from these changes. Proof of vaccination for New York State is leaving Apple Wallet. Yes, leaving Apple Insider says the state-issued Excelsior Pass has a short lifespan, expiring six months after a user has been vaccinated. To keep proof of vaccination handy, the piece says users will have to update to Excelsior Pass Plus, which comes with a pretty big minus. While the original Excelsior Pass was supported by Apple Wallet, Excelsior Pass Plus is not. No one knows why, though someone seems to think this is a feature, not a bug. In a user's guide to the vaccine passports, Apple Insider says New York State said the Excelsior Pass Plus passes are not supported by Apple Wallet at this time. The guide also states that notification support is also not available. 
It isn't clear why the new pass doesn't work with the wallet app, according to the piece, but it does appear to be a conscious choice by the state to omit support. While the reasoning is unclear, the user experience is also clunky. It isn't as convenient or fast, according to the report, since users will have to open the New York State Wallet app when they need to show proof of vaccination, rather than just a double-click on an iPhone or Apple Watch. And finally today, good news, lame news for Apple Pay Cash users. The Cupertino company sent an email to Apple Pay users on Thursday announcing a new kind of card for instant transfer and higher rates for those transfers. Starting yesterday, according to Apple, users can use instant transfer with MasterCard debit cards in addition to Visa debit cards. So if your friend sends you 500 bucks via Apple Pay Cash, you can put it in the bank with either type of debit card. A welcome change, no doubt. As for the annoying change, getting the money into the bank is set to cost a bit more. Beginning on the 26th of August, Apple says the cost to make an instant transfer will change to 1.5% of the transfer amount with a minimum fee of $0.25 cents and a maximum fee of 15 bucks. That's up from the current 1% of the transfer amount and a maximum fee of 10 bucks. Apple's email says users can transfer funds to the bank using ACH. No fee for that, though funds take one to three business days to make the move, not two hours or less. Coming up in a few minutes, a photographer, a computing pioneer, or two, and a raconteur have each received invitations. The table is set, and it is time for Let's Talk Apple host Bart Bouchot's dinner party. The show is called In a Few Minutes. Look for it and listen on macOSken.com or wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. Learn more and check your rate at upstart.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.